Hi everybody, I am just going to be interviewing my grandfather who is a World War II vet and he's from the USS Intrepid. And so I hope you guys enjoy this. <laughs> wow, that's a long time ago. What do you remember that right, day when right you went? Right here in Spokane. Right here in Spokane? Yeah. What do you remember when you went there and you joined? Well, I had another fellow with me, but they didn't take him. They took me, but they wouldn't take him <laughs> for a physical cause of a physical condition. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I called I call a duty a little later than that. Report out of Farragut, Idaho. Mm -hmm. You probably know where Farragut is. <laughs> North Idaho. For boot camp duty. Mm -hmm. After I had my boot camp duty, I went into what they call the Seaman Yards for six months. We had security of the base. The Marines didn't have anything to do with the security at Farragut. Mm. But there were a few there, all right, but not not do, not on duty for security. <laughs> I mean, after I left, uh, did my boot camp in my senior security camp. I I had a chance to sign up for three different kind of professions to go into. Quartermaster, uh, hospital corpsman, quartermaster, and gunnery. Well, mm -hmm. I found out the hospital equipment got filled up, so I, was, I wouldn't be going into that. Ah. So I chose the gunman. So they sent me, and they came in and picked me up, sent me back to Great, Paul, Great Lakes Naval Training Station for school. I was there for about three months, and I got back to, to when I left there, the yeoman in charge of the draft that I was on, going on the train, I said, which way do you think we might be going? He said, I think probably the west. He couldn't tell me exactly where, where we were headed. Mm. So when I got the shoemaker, I was a receiving station for the sailor. Mm -hmm. uh, there I... We got in the middle of the morning there and they took... <laughs> It was fun to find out if everybody was there, and it was raining, mud, huh. and on the, when we went into our buries, they were looking like everything the next morning. <laughs> they were. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't stay at Shoemaker too long, so they took me to where the ship was at. Hunter's Point, it was called. It was in Dry Dock. Oh. And when I got there, I stood in the, on the side of the, on the and looked at that thing. One thing, one place to another, I couldn't believe it. A, a, a ship would be so big. <laughs> They're huge. <laughs> and what what ship was that that you were getting on to? Huh? What ship was it that you were getting on to? In the Intrepid. It was in Dry Dock. Yep. Well, the Intrepid had been built and had a shakedown coming from the, over in the Atlantic and went through the Panama Canal and went, went aground in the canal. Wow. <laughs> Put a whole big hole in it. That's why I come it was in Dry Dock in San Francisco. Because that's a tight squeeze. Yeah, for repair. <laughs> <laughs> the draft I was on was about 40 different men. Went on board about the same time I did. Well, I, I, being that I'd been to gunnery school, I got put in with the gunnery division wow. and seaman division. First division it was. And we mounted our guns 
forward and the five, I was attached to the 5 inch 38, which is not the, not the shell of a, oh. of a gun. That was, that was the whole powder was about this long. Mm -hmm. This is the base of it. That has been drilled out. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is just the, the bottom of the shell. It, uh -huh. weighed, it weighed 15 to 17 pounds. This would have been full pounds. of brass. It weighed about 15, 15 pounds altogether, just a shell. Wow. The projector that went ahead of it, it weighed 54 pounds. Of it. They made me a first loader because of being on a left handing mm -hmm. on, the, on, the, on the gun. And I, I had a hydraulic system from a handing room below came up like this. If you took one out and then, and then fill up another one and then come like this, it's right next to the gun itself. And I had a handle of a projector. They put the shell in first. So then this went then, in, yeah, and then there was... And then the projector would be put in after that. Yeah, so this was and like a big bullet and shell. And I had a ramrod that I pulled down, and, came and it, it went on into the, the... The breech of the gun is be ready to fire. Mm -hmm. Well, I was on the... We were there in Dragoff for quite a little while, but we left there to Pearl Harbor after our first one aboard. First day was pretty kind of rough getting out of the, all of the, the waves. Yeah, the current getting out of San Francisco Bay. Oh man, I bet it was. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. It would be because of the. The Pacific and yeah, everything and is you, so choppy. I had a, I had to stay outside to keep from getting really sick for a while. I bet so. <laughs> Seasick. Mm hmm Well, I made it without getting really sick. Took us about four days to get over to Hawaii, to Pearl Harbor, or mm -hmm. the where we came into. The whole... The whole, pretty much the whole Pacific fleet was in Pearl Harbor at that time, and, and we were getting getting ready to make our first move to uh, the war to the Marshall Islands. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to Marshall Islands, that was quite a little ways away. They already been taken, the Marines and the Navy and the, and the soldiers had taken an island, so we. Didn't have that very much to do, but the, in, in the big bay area, the whole fleet was in there at one time, and a lot of ships. And just, just tell us kind of your, your memory of what 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 did you feel when you saw all those ships together like that? Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> I couldn't believe we had so many ships. We did have an awful lot of ships in there. and. Uh, we spent a few days there, anchored there, before we made a move to another place. But I was able to, I was playing basketball on the Enterprise that was in there. The original, that was the only ship that was spared when the bombing of Pearl Harbor was the Enterprise. Enterprise. Mm. It was a day late of making the, oh. the trip to Pearl Harbor, or they would have had it in Pearl Harbor too. Had been had been to an island and dumped off some people, and, and, and then the weather got bad, and they were delayed. Or they would have, if they had left sooner, they probably would have been caught in the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Exactly. Wow. So you were playing basketball. I heard you were uh, yeah, quite the star the, in your uh, high school days too. Uh, well, uh, underneath the flight deck, it's handing it as a deck covers the same all the length of the ship and then that's where they repair and keep other planes mm -hmm. upside. They bring me up they had three we had three elevators on the ship for planes to be moved. One forward, one on the port side and that's on the left hand side of the ship, port side, and then another one in the back. So we had quite, we had a probably around 65 to 
Chocolate plains on our wow. ship. Wow. <laughs> That's an awful lot. Well, I would have been well, overwhelmed too. Yeah. Well, anyway, after we had been there and just for two or three days, we departed and headed for our first big battle. They figured that it was Truck Island. They figured that the Air Force had gone over and taken pictures and thought there wasn't nothing there. Well, we found out nothing different that night. First then, mm -hmm. when we got there, we, we, we caught an aerial torpedo from the Japanese that evening. But they thought it was one of our own planes coming in for emergency, but then he dropped a torpedo and we caught it on the after part of our ship. Mm. It knocked all our after steering and then knocked and heated up one of the props. The carrier that size has two sets of skirts on each side of the, of the steering. Of it. Big, big ones, are, there's four of them to a Aircraft uh, of 10 feet in each one, on uh, each prop. Well, we had to knock down one of them because it overheated from the bomb from that torpedo. And we were out there going around in circles and going back and forth, you know, until <laughs> we got control of it. And then, we, and then we headed back toward Pearl Harbor with two others. Destroyers escorting us to get out of the boat, the, 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 the battle area there. Wow. They followed us for a couple of days and then we got back to Pearl Harbor. And we had to take everything off that we had that the, they could use out there to head back to the States. I took in bombs and ammunition, like 40 millimeter, 5 inch 38, and like that, These guys right the here. shell, and, am and ammunition, we unloaded it all there before we headed back to Pearl Harbor. 100 points <laughs> for repair. <laughs> mm -hmm. That had to be really, really something to yeah. go through. Jeez. Then when, when we started, after we got the walnut thing done and fixed up, we headed back again out there. Mm -hmm. And we were we made the big news by putting fire trucks and buses and two or three planes on the flight deck and to take back over to Pearl Harbor on the ship. It was covered with the things that they could use over there. Mm -hmm. So they used they used you like a big cargo ship. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we, we were. That's yeah, we were transporting a lot of stuff. That's pretty cool. A lot of vehicles. And they took a picture of that and made quite the news of us being covered with all the with the with the buses and the fire trucks and the planes on <laughs> covered the flight deck. They they had to secure them down so they wouldn't be moving. Mm -hmm. Moving and, around. Yeah. That's a lot to on that. Oh yeah. Yeah. That had to be something. Is there a picture of that? that there oh, is. I'll have to see that. <laughs> well, the next and big engagement was in the Philippines for us. We, we, I think there, we might have hit another place before we hit Philippines. You know, but we got to the Philippines and I was in both Philippines one and two battles. And we hit Manila real heavy with bombs, the airfield and so on, so they couldn't take off and mm -hmm. do anything from us there. And, but then we caught two cam caught two kamikazes there, hit us. Wow! From come run right out of the sun and come down and hit us. One in five minute interviews, there were the two of them in the head. The first one he met us with his bomb and he ended up on about 10 feet, the pilot did that from the forward part of the flight deck. <laughs> wow. And he was, he was bandaged, bandaged, bashed up pretty good. I bet so. Yeah. Gosh. And they were, and they were trying to revive some fellows when, on the crew on the ship. 
someone might have to try to save him. When, when one came in and dropped his bone in the after part, and when he went through the flight deck and exploded on the hangar deck. And t t tell him why it, it, it didn't go any farther than just the well, hangar deck. Well, it had a half an inch of armor steel on the plate, on the hangar deck. Real thick. Yeah. I mean, it made a little bit of a dent, but it caught, it caught a lot of our planes that we had back there. Yeah. We had ammunition. Oh. And, uh, and uh, some of them went off. One guy, he was getting ready to go up to the forecastle, I think it was, the ladder mm -hmm. and the forward part. He was right at the bottom and some trap was from that fire hit him oh, and killed wow. him. <laughs> well, we oh, had 59 either killed or missing and 120 injured from the, the, the bomb that came on through there. It's amazing you can remember we, we all fought, that. We wow. fought for about six to eight hours to try to save the ship, which we did. And uh, well, here we come back then to Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor again. again. <laughs> oh, wow. Like you again? We I'll fix spent, you up again. <laughs> we spent quite a bit of time in Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. <laughs> before repairs. And we went one more time out there. <laughs> you did? Yeah. And the next one, I'm not really all that sure. Just, well, we, uh, well, I think we got. We bombed that island off of China, the, the China figures there's, uh, what's the name of that island? Midway? Huh? Midway? No, it wasn't Midway. But that, that was the change of the war though, the Battle of Midway. We weren't in that one until a little later. Yeah. But that, that, that was really a wild battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, the uh, postman was here, yeah, this, yeah, it was this morning. Saw my, he saw my name on here and uh, said, what ship was that? I told him he was on the, 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 the aircraft carrier Midway. <laughs> He'd been on Wow. wow. <laughs> the postman. The postman. <laughs> it's interesting to see that, hear him tell me. Mm -hmm. I asked him how many men did you have on there? He figured about 9,000. Well, we had only 3,000 on, on our ship. It was a pretty good size, a little bigger than a triple size. Wow. So, so that, that kind of tells you the size of the carriers as they've grown. Mm -hmm. the, the Intrepid was actually one of the most advanced aircraft carriers of its time during World War II. Just so that you guys realize how much larger aircraft carriers have gotten. Well, you know, we had four different groups of task forces. Each ta there were four of them, and then about each task force had around 18 ships. And three of them would be in battle, and one would be in taking bombs and ammunition and fuel. And in a place called Ulithi out there that they could come in and do it have a little refreshment for a little while, for a couple of days maybe before we'd start on. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we came into the Lithi and after we'd been in, in the battle mm -hmm. and uh, had a couple, three days of refreshment. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, while we were there, we, we heard about another plane coming in, thought it was a carrier. And, uh, and they came in and stove down on where they had lights and stuff. It wasn't a, it wasn't a ship at all. It hit the land. Oh wow! They missed, they missed, they missed one or two ships. <laughs> they made a mistake. <laughs> they made a big one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, after that, I think we had it for. Well, well there's more than north. Philippines and the Southern Philippines. Mm -hmm. The Southern Philippines, we had a skipper that got transferred to a task group when he was he was in charge. He was an admiral. He was hunting for help down in the southern part of the Philippines. So they figured we could head, head down there to try to be of help to him. 
Well, they had done a pretty good job as far as from guns on um, battle wagon and cruisers, you know, that type of fighting. There wasn't much of that being done, and it was pea boats between the, <coughs> between the northern Philippines and the southern Philippines. There's quite an area there that, that the Japanese were hiding in there. And when they came out, those PT boats, boats were taking them down and hitting them with their torpedoes pretty much. Ah, yes. So we didn't really have an awful lot when we got down there to do, mm -hmm. but we got down there to help, help that admiral who had been a skipper. <laughs> he had a little good. small fleet down there to try to, but they didn't have to do much. We took mm -hmm. care of them pretty good out in, in between mm -hmm. the, the PT boats that Well then, after we left there, I think we, we headed for, uh, oh, what was, I'm trying to think of that island that we have pretty cool, we had control over out there. Uh, I can't think of it right offhand. I, I know which island you Oh, Guam. Yeah, Guam. Yeah, we headed for Guam. And, and, and while we were in Guam, we had a storm hit us fairly well. And uh, we had to leave and head for the, the Yellow Sea to get away from the storm and help protect us. Mm -hmm. I saw waves before we got there. I saw waves that were coming up but a third of the up on the flight deck. Yeah. Wow, that's huge. Were huge waves. So we made it out of there and got into, not quite into the Red Sea, but we were in an area where there wasn't much, so much storm. Mm -hmm. And then when we did, get to, after that was over, with, we went in, they did put us into the Yellow Sea to stand, stand by for the Army and the Marines to hit, it, hit Korea. And the Koreans were going crazy about the Americans were what they were doing there. The Spaniards were all waving the American flags. The mm -hmm. pilots were seeing all this flying over them. Mm -hmm. They were so happy to see the Americans <laughs> in there to protect them. I bet you felt really great seeing that too. But after we left there, we went back to Guam and then we headed, they got orders to go to the Japan signing of the armistice. We were scheduled to, oh. but they changed our orders and kept it. Didn't we? Didn't we were supposed to have been the first one of the first ships in there, but they didn't. We weren't there for the signing until later. We did get, get into the the, 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 the I'm trying to think. <laughs> Of the, of the sun. harbor, yeah. mm -hmm. Tokyo Harbor, yeah, Tokyo, yeah, we anchored out in the Tokyo Harbor, so and I had a chance to get into into Japan by Liberty. Mm -hmm. I, I was I had two or three Liberties, and I went first Liberty I had. They, after we got it from our ship to the, on the beach. They held us up for quite a little while, and while we were being held up, people were coming and the guys were throwing cigarettes out and gum and candy bars to them. If it was even just a butt from a guy that smoked, boy, they had that thing out in no time. It was like they were feeding chickens, people <laughs> were. One, one, they were so, so desperate in need. Mm -hmm. and, 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 we could go around and see what it, was, what it looked like there, but it was pretty tough for them. Very rough. They were in bad, real bad shape. I got to go two other places too. Yokosuke and... and uh, it's awesome. One of the places where the, we dropped bombs on from the Army Air Corps was, was, was taken off from one of our carriers and, and hit, hit 
Japan mainline. Mm-hmm. One trip only maybe. Some of them didn't get back to the <laughs> They had to crash these planes on our own. Wow. Didn't make it, but didn't they did hit it. Japan with some bombs. In fact, when I was in Tokyo, I saw where they knocked out, hit one big plane, big building, but underneath they made a USO out of it <laughs> after we took over the, the, the Japanese. They had to go down two or three flights of stairs to get to this. I got down there and they were playing music, both Japanese and American, and then they were dancing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's a wild m- memory, yeah, too. Yeah, the girl came up with a deal which had Japanese and American, and we, we correspond by Japanese and American language out of this book. <laughs> oh, that had to be difficult, <laughs> but interesting. Yeah, it was quite interesting. <laughs> Well, after we got through there, the war, the war was already over, really, and then mm-hmm. we, we came back home, but we bypassed the, Philipp- the Hawaiian Islands and headed back to, to, to uh, Los Angeles Harbor, and, uh, which is one of the largest man-made harbors in, in the world, done in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, another name for it too is, uh, oh, what is it? Long Beach. End of the beach. Okay. Anyway. Like a... I can't think of the other name for it, but it was, it, it, it was a pretty good sized harbor. And that's where I got off of. Uh, and that was in January of 1946. Wow. I was discharged. Uh, I had to go by train to Bremerton to get my discharge. There were several of us on the ship that left and had headed for Bremerton. Mm-hmm. <coughs> So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose what stripes and bright stars. 